it handled that load very well. That was over 10 minutes at 130 amps. Pretty strong. Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. I'm going to bring you another exciting battery review video today. Um, this is from a brand I've been wanting to test for quite a while, so... So in case you haven't seen the channel, or if you haven't forgot, I love batteries and energy storage. Batteries, energy storage, and solar power are vital to continued operation of the Alker Mountain Homestead. So finally got my hands on a Wise battery. Wise is a reputable name, been in the market for several years. Give you some quick specs on the battery before I get into the testing. Of course, it is a lithium iron phosphate battery, 12.8 volts, 100 amp hours. It's got a 10 year warranty from the manufacturer. Supposedly has 100 amp BMS in it. I'm gonna test that. Max charge is 100 amps, but recommended is a 0.2C, which is 20 amp recommended charge. Uh, it can handle up to 250 amps discharge momentarily, and that's based on temperature of the thermal switch in the BMS. And it supposedly can charge from zero degrees Celsius or 32 Fahrenheit up to 50 degrees Celsius. That's the BMS parameters, and it can discharge to negative 20 Celsius. So it's supposed to have a wide operating temperature range, which is nice to see. And the BMS cutoff high temp is 90 degrees Celsius. We've got a balance function with the BMS. Anything above 3.55 volts, it starts balancing the cells. So I'm going to get this unit completely charged and topped off. Then I'm going to do a real life capacity test on it. Okay, so it is fully charged. Let me turn up just a smidge to show you. It's topped off. Uh, now time to hook it up and pull it back down. All right, so I got the WISE battery fully charged, hooked to the little alpha inverter today. Just some light duty work, nothing, no big lifting, so don't need the top bowl, just going this little alpha. Got the energy meter zeroed out, and you can see the battery voltage is up because it just came off the charger shortly ago. I ain't even turned on the power to the inverter yet. Just want to show you there's no, no hidden wires, nothing like that. This is a true real-life capacity test. So I'll go ahead and flip the inverter on, and then I'll get my load hooked up. Alrighty. I still, it's hard to believe this little alpha only pulls 3.5 watts idle. That's got to be the lowest idle draw of any inverter. That is awesome. All right, inverter's on. Fix to put the load to it. I'll show you the load in just a second. That's 340 watt draw. So, you know, that's not hitting the battery too hard. So it'll give me about four hours of runtime. And for the load on the battery capacity test, I'm just using a Hamilton Beach slow cooker, just a nice, stable, consistent, resistive load. Good for testing and capacity of that battery. So we're underway, settled in at 300 and 33.8 watts on the slow cooker so 32 watt hours already out of the battery i'll be back in about three hours to check on it uh got some other projects to work on so see you shortly all right with the halfway mark now for the capacity drawdown uh 640 watt hours through the battery already still holding 12.83 volts under the 330 watt load all right let's see what she got my inverter alarm started going off uh, 1,234 watt hours out of a possible 1,280, which I was pulling it at, you know, 25 to 30 amps the whole time. So 1,235, uh, I'm gonna shut it down at 10 and a half. All right, the inverter shut off on low voltage. 1,243 watt hours out of the WISE battery. I'll talk about the capacity test real quick before I do the full load test. That was 97 amp hours on an inverter. That's a real world test. If I had a capacity tester, I probably could have got closer to 100, but I tested in a real world conditions. When your inverter cuts off at 10 and a half volts, that's all the capacity that matters to you. It's fully charged and I'm gonna run a full power pull on it for about 10 minutes. So I'm gonna turn the inverter on now. So we'll see the battery is discharging now. 13.4 volts at the start of the test. I'm gonna run a resistive load. I'm going to dial it in a little over 100 amps and then uh, let it run for 10 minutes. So, uh, see what we got. All right. It handled that load very well. 
That was over 10 minutes at 130 amps. Pretty strong. Now for the part everybody came to see. It's time for the teardown. One last look at it. We're gonna cut it open and see the build quality and uh, check all the internal components out and see what we got going on. So time to bust it open. We got it broke most of the way loose. It should open up now. So we'll look in it at the same time together. There it is. Uh, everything, make sure everything's tight. Yeah, everything's tight. So let me uh, go a little further down in here and see what the rest of it looks like. All right, I've got the cell pack finally starting to come out. So let's take a take a gander. See what everything looks like. Plenty of foam everywhere. Plenty of glue everywhere. So get all this out. Then I'll cut the epoxy board away fiber tape and we'll see if we can see anything on the cells, BMS, all that good stuff. And there is the BMS. We can get some data on this one. Sci hang BMS. 100 amp. The cells have tie band compression around them. Fairly tight right there. They got epoxy board between each cell, so they're not gonna rub. I like to see that. And here's the temperature sensor right here. There's a shot of the laser welds on the cells for the bus bars. They got a nice little hump right here for an expansion joint between the cells. I like that too. And then the balance leads are actually bolted down to the bus bars, so there's no solder joints or not for that to come loose. So it appears to be a fairly good quality pack. Here's a date code on one of the sales, 2023. So, and those are actually the, the test numbers right there. That's 101505 milliamp hours. And then this one, try to get you a better shot. So each of them's got their own capacity measurement stickers on there that they test at the factory. So that's a good touch. All right, let's check the low temp cutoff on this temp sensor right here. My colder than ice ice pack. Remember, watch the charger over there. If it works, that charger will drop out. There it went. It took it exactly one minute. So it's got a one minute delay in the BMS before it shuts that off. Now warm it back up. Should go back to charging. There it goes. Nice. Now check the high temperature cell cut off right here so heat it up should drop out twenty seconds cool it off there it goes so overall yes this is a very nice battery uh, you know, I didn't pull the full hundred amp hours out of it but the cells are showing test data for 101, 101 and a half. They're fairly closely matched, which is good. The pack construction and everything looks nice. Decent BMS. I've seen this in several other brands of batteries. You know, it seems to work well. It's nice, thick aluminum heat sink. Nice printed circuit board on it. If I could change one thing, I'd like to see a little bit bigger wire inside the battery, but it seems to hold the load pretty well as is. You know, overall, just a good battery. So if it's something that fits your bill, I'll put a link in the description. You can check it out. So I hope you enjoyed today's video of the WISE Lithium Iron Phosphate Battery Teardown. Questions about this battery or anything else, please put it in the comment section. I hope you earned a like from you today. That really helps the channel when you hit that like button. So if you're not subscribed, I'd greatly appreciate the subscription from you as well. Thank you for watching the Off-Grid Mountain Homestead. Until next time, I bet her the grid don't go. Y'all have a nice day. Be safe.